Tech is a really strange field to be in these days. We're worried about the impact of AI in our jobs while at the same time being the very group of people driving such an AI adoption. Some of us are not using it, some of us are using it discreetly, and some are being forced to use it. And with all the new innovation, do you need to start looking for another career or should you go all in? Ask 10 people, get 10 different answers. Well, in times like these, I like to take a step back, assess the current situation and where I'm finding myself in it, and put together some general truths to follow to stay level-headed about it all. And it's not just AI, it's the job market overall. It's the nagging indie hacker asking you for the fifth time today, what are you shipping, bro? It's the comparisons between you and people in the places you want to be. Well, again, what are some truths that you can put together to maintain a clear signal in it all? Well, here are five that I'm currently standing by. Number one, a nine to five is not a bad thing. Now this may seem irrelevant, but we live in a time where it's fairly easy to make money and have a profitable side hustle. It really is. But the danger in this, and one of the biggest downsides, is that we all think we're supposed to do that. Not that we thought that, but that others are eager to shove it down our throats. And there's an ever-growing discontentment, it seems, in the jobs people are working today. People aren't fulfilled in what they do. They're sick of what they do. But I think the real reason for the discontentment is because the internet is full of people who have left their nine to five telling us, telling you that you must leave yours too. That they finally have the freedom they've always wanted, that they call their own shots. And if you aren't calling your own shots, then you're some slave to your nine to five and are thus subpar in some way or living a subpar life. While most of the people who say this, who really are successful running their own thing, are in that position or are funded to live that way because they provide some sort of product or course that educates you on how to do it. They've succeeded in some field or skill set and they're passing it on to you for three easy payments. And it's kind of a necessity. It's business. I've sold blueprints in the past and if I could have come up with a high ticket item, I probably would have. No hate here. But you see these people, the money they're making, the trips they're taking, and you move into this state of discontentment with a desire to be in their shoes and you stay in this state for an extended period of time and lose focus of the here and now. Now, I've been back and forth on this. I've had the job, I've run my own business, and now I've recently taken a full-time role at a company that I really like. And when you return to the nine to five, you realize that most people are not actually living in this delusion. They're making good, steady money, they have good insurance, take regular paid vacations, they're challenged, growing, social, and the whole rat race idea falls apart. They're healthy, they have hobbies, they have families, and they don't talk 24-7 about JavaScript. And there you are running your own business, overworked, unsteady pay, with overpriced insurance, isolated, and you begin to wonder whether you've been online too long comparing yourself to everyone on your feed while the rest of the nine to fivers who ignore that stuff are the ones thriving and fulfilled. So first, stop following the people who keep making a scene about you being in the rat race if that's your thing. It'll wear on you. Sure, have a side hobby or even a side business. I'll always have YouTube to run on the side or fall back into full time if needed. I'll always have a blog. It's good not to have your job a single point of failure. But stop believing that a nine to five is a bad thing. It's quite the opposite for many, if not most people, and being on the other side of it probably won't bring you any more satisfaction. And unless you are financially free completely, whatever you're doing, whoever you're doing work for, they are your boss and have you on deadlines. And just to add to all of this, we're designed to work. Do you really want to wake up every morning with nothing to do, nothing to pursue? It would get old quick. Number two, stop viewing yourself as an employee. This is the actual mindset you need to have in this new era. And I've said this before in other videos, but I think it's so beneficial. Here's what typically happens. You get a role at a great company as a software developer. You truly love the product and are glad to be working there. You're part of the family. You're appreciated. Then one day they tell you to pack it up. They no longer need you. And you're devastated because you've unintentionally built your identity around this company and their product. I'm an engineer at Microsoft. I'm a data analyst at Datadog and you can't believe you can no longer be associated with that product or that title. And you feel left with a huge void as to what to do next. And the issue here is that you need to begin to view your employer, not as your employer and you are the employee, which creates this false identity that exists on shaky ground, but instead you need to view them as one of your customers. You are in the business of software development or AI consulting, whatever, and you provide the service. The skill set is yours, you own it. Your employer then pays you money to do work for them. 
They are your customer and just so happen to take up 40 hours of your week. You have a business of providing tech services of some sort and they are your customer. Again, it might be your only customer, but having this mindset, as John Sanmez put it in his book on soft skills, moves you from a position of powerlessness and dependency to one of autonomy and self-direction. You begin to think of yourself, your career, your possibilities in a much bigger light and it allows you to actively manage your desired outcomes better than just being an employee that belongs to an employer because when they decide your time's up they won't hesitate and you won't be left without an identity so instead of i work in cybersecurity at microsoft come up with something better like i'm a cyber defense strategist who specializes in protecting cloud infrastructure i actually met a guy last week who was one of the first engineers at docker and has been using go since 2013. what's he gonna say i'm a go developer no he better come up with an amazing pitch line what about an sre Maybe something like, I build resilient digital systems that keep applications running 24 seven. This is the mindset that you should always have and let it guide your career throughout the years. And speaking of skill set, the talents that you own and have achieved, you need to actively work to keep these sharp. And before we move on to number three in the actual AI truths of this video, let me share with you how you can continually sharpen that skill set in just 15 minutes a day with the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant has thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, AI, and ultimately serves to sharpen your thinking every day. And it's built for busy people like me and you. You can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and it's a much better use of your time than mindless scrolling. Maybe you want to dive deeper into large language models, big data, or just learn the basics of Python in their programming and CS course. Today, I started a new course called Everyday Statistics, and I worked through the first lesson on means, which is, as you know, the average, or more specifically, the total sum of values in a sample divided by the number of values in your sample. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also, in the process, become a better thinker overall. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash travismedia or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. All right, number three, AI extremism is stupid. One reason I haven't been making weekly videos these days is because my timeline is flooded with what I like to call AI extremism. And what I mean by this is that there are hundreds of videos coming out daily from YouTubers about how AI has completely transformed their life, how it's saving them X hours of work per day, and I click on it, and it's an AI tutorial where they do something like connect to all of their Google accounts. The AI then decides for them what emails are important and marks the unimportant ones as red. So when they check their emails, they only see ones that AI has deemed important and it saves them four hours a day. Now I have the hardest time believing that these people really use this in their day to day. One, do you get so many emails that you need AI to filter them out for you? Ever heard of the unsubscribe link at the bottom? Do the work. Number two, why are you allowing AI to sift through all your personal emails? And what about the ones where AI is ordering groceries, moving at turtle speed, using my credit card, and I'm thinking, I can actually do this myself in a tenth of the time. And this AI agent is gonna talk to this AI agent and they're gonna become besties. My entire business will just be agents chatting back and forth, making executive decisions, spending my company card, saving me hours so that I can work even harder on other things. And to me, while I'm excited about the technology and really do see the benefits in the years to come, I just get sick of all the hypotheticals being turned into norms. Like, dude, I'm just gonna check my own email, take a two second glance at my calendar, take a one second glance at my weather app, order my own groceries, and get fired up about more meaningful things like AI medical discoveries or running an MCP server in my home lab so that I can chat about all my data when needed. This kind of content keeps you anxious. It makes you think AI is much further than it already is in terms of adoption, and it keeps you in fear. If that's your feed, maybe curate it down a bit. These one person content creator businesses can easily let AI in their back door and it makes for great videos, but try to stay realistic and also keep some realism about your own life as well. Call a friend, go for a walk, type an email and open the window to check the weather sometime. Number four, balanced AI is necessary. So all that being said, I'm head over heels about AI these days on the personal level. I talk to Claude daily. It explains concepts to me. It helps me plan projects. It writes a large amount of my code. And let me talk about that briefly. I know how to code. 
I know what I want when I prompt AI. Many do not. They vibe code a SaaS product, and then they expect me to sign up, giving them my data, my credit card? No way. There will come a day where you can have no coding skills and write code successfully. Today is not one of those days. But if you understand programming, or really just put in a month or two to learn it, AI can be unbelievably beneficial. I actually just built an MCP server for my own home lab, and I wrote none of the code, but I orchestrated all of it. So I wanted to create a kind of second brain where I could store past events, like when I had my roof replaced, when I had my water heater replaced, great quotes, upcoming events, things I didn't want to forget, but could recall in plain English, not SQL queries. So I conversed with Claude and mapped out the right database structure. I had it build me a simple, fast API to-do app. Then I tweaked that to the endpoints I really wanted. Then we added the fast API MCP server operations to that API. And then Claude added very detailed comments to each route for the LLM client to understand everything better. Then we worked through building me my own client instead of having to use Claude desktop. And all of this is to say that I orchestrated every step of it, but I wrote very little code. I just saw it come together the way I wanted with my oversight. Also, just the other morning, I created a portfolio app that I could track my average pricing of my stock portfolio and have it display and even alert me when those stocks fall below my average so that I could pick up some more. It's amazing. It took like an hour and I wrote probably 3% of the code. This kind of AI usage is mind-blowing and unbelievably beneficial. And if you're still a curmudgeon about it all and still need to be employable, I would urge you to try it out, even very minimally in your workflow. Be cautious, tell it not to write any code, but just suggest what it would do and use it as an advisor. This is the way the industry is headed and has already gone. The boat is left. Get on it. It's not necessary for you to grow as a great programmer, but it is necessary for the success of your future career. Number five, coding alone is getting phased out. The big question these days revolves around the future of coding. You're a developer of some sort, AI is quickly overshadowing the skill set. Where does that leave you? Well, truth number five is that coding alone is a skill that is diminishing. I talked to a guy the other day, he's been a developer for eight years or so, he moved into a senior role and recently into a principal role. His duties shifted from coding 85% of the day to now overseeing the larger picture, architecting, managing, working with third-party teams, etc. The point here is that over time, while you do get better at coding, you should be adapting and fostering bigger, broader, softer skills that essentially makes you more than a developer alone. In my own career, I went from a full-stack web dev to a site reliability engineer, to developer relations, to doing YouTube full-time, to now working in the role of developer experience. I realized that I like to code, but I have a skill for making videos, making the technical simple to understand, and that extends into helping developers adopt products, making their experience great, and the like. So while coding by itself is on the decline, meaning we no longer need 100% human effort to get code written, that never was really your only duty. And as this progresses, the skills of solving problems, driving AI and agents, providing solutions, navigating the cloud, all of this becomes more prominent. And what happens and what has happened in the past during these major transitions is that new opportunities present themselves. And we don't know what these are yet, but we do know that they will require technical people to work them. And many disagree. They see a day where we will have nothing to do. AI is gonna do it all. But do you think people can live like that? No, we'll go and create the next phase of history and everything that's created will have some technological complexity to it. So be a technical person. This includes coding. This includes tech books, cloud concepts, networking, math, problem solving. So in this way, I'm very excited and will aim to keep my skills sharp and learn new things as they come up. And here's another point. We think that every company is using AI now and are ready to let all of their people go. Wrong. We think this because the news always reports on what Meta, Google, Nvidia, and the like are doing. But what about the security startup, the universities, factories? Many of these smaller companies just have not had any use case yet for an AI takeover, or even AI at all. They're still hiring engineers. Maybe AI doesn't really work yet with what they offer. So the thought that you have a month or two left to figure it out is probably not true in your situation. There's more time to develop more skills, to challenge yourself to shift into new responsibilities, learn new things, and adapt as this big transition continues to unfold. And the final truth here, number six, is that you need hobbies. Guys, it's not healthy to center your entire life around work. 
And this is why many of the 9 to 5ers are happy. They get paid vacations, their work hours end each day, and this stability creates an opportunity for the life in work-life balance. They hike, bike, play sports, travel, play music, whatever, but they enjoy themselves from the money they make. And I've been guilty of this in the past. In fact, a few years ago, I became aware of the fact that all I ever talked to people about was my work. And to make it even worse, that's all people seem to talk to me about also. How's your work, Travis? I couldn't think of anything else to talk about. And this is because I had nothing else going on. I had no hobbies but coding. And that was actually my job. So these days I have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. Think back to what you used to do a lot. What were past interests of yours? What are some current interests? Go join a gym, get a bike, plan a trip, start playing chess, get a kayak, pick up a sport. Do you know Marquise Brownlee, the big tech YouTuber at MKBHD? Did you know he represented the United States in the World Ultimate Frisbee Championships last year? Now that's a hobby. So think about your life and think about how exciting it is. Your work may not be, but the paycheck is and it provides you with the opportunity to do more exciting things. Take this time to assess. So in conclusion, keep these things in mind. Don't let the just ship it crowd trick you into being discontent in your job. See yourself as a business and your employer as your customer. Tone down AI extremism on your feed, mindfully adopt AI in your workflows, and grow in your technical non-coding skills as much as you can, and remember to live life outside of work. Enjoy yourselves as much as you're able. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.